Welcome into Dallas Mavericks today. We're in a very on-brand situation for Dallas sports. The Mavericks up 2-0 in the series over the LA Clippers, up 3-2 entering game six, have lost the series following a game seven loss on the road against the LA Clippers, 126 to 111 as a very impressive and frustrating third quarter for Mavs fans, at least impressive for the Clippers side. 21 to 2 third quarter run by LA sinks the Mavericks despite the very best efforts out of Luka Doncic, who drops 46 points. Unfortunately, as we'll get into his supporting class, your ca uh, cast, excuse me, not particularly effective in this one as the Mavs lose yet another heartbreaking series in the postseason. Big reason why? The Clippers could not miss in this one. A, a truly incredible shooting performance by LA. 50% from the field, 46.5 from deep. They hit 23s in this game, and they were perfect. 24 of 24 from the line. The offense was fine enough for the Mavericks. The defense did not do its part in this one. So we'll give some thoughts on this question here, but before we do that, I want to hear from you guys. Who do you blame for today's loss? Is it Chris Stops? Is it Luca for some really weird reason? Is it head coach Rick Carlisle? Is it the entire bench? Get your votes in. Who do you blame for the Mavericks not being able to close this one out and losing another game in very classic, unfortunately, Dallas sports pattern? Again, the Mavs were in position, right? They, they win game one by 10. They win game two, a 2-0 series lead as the road teams kept winning all the way up until game summer, or game seven, excuse me. Game three, the Clippers win. Game four, the Clippers win. But the Mavs take game five, and it looked like they were going to win the game or win the series in six. They could not take game six, however, and then a pretty disappointing effort in game seven. They clawed their way back into it very, very late, made it a one-score game, but it was very much too little too late in this one as the Mavs could not gut it out. I will say this, though. I think it is very much time to embrace this fact. Luka Doncic is one of the best young players in the NBA. 46 points. Now, yes, there was a third quarter dip. He was one point away, though, from the most points in a Game 7 effort. 14 assists that, in all seriousness, could have and probably should have been more like 20. He was 5 of 11 from deep. As a reminder, the Mavs, as a team, shot 10 of 11. That's 5 of 25 for everybody else out there. Big yikes there. And I do think the reality is, as we move forward in the offseason, there are some real questions around what exactly Kristaps Porzingis is going to be a part and what he's going to do for this organization. They paid him a lot of money. But in, in a game seven, when your superstar player in Luka is clearly tired in the second half, you need your other big player to step up, take over, get buckets so Luka can get some energy back in him. Instead, Kristaps had four points in the entire second half, was 0 of 5 from deep. And once again, the number two player, I suppose the number two player on this team, was a non-factor far too often. Meanwhile, for the Clippers, the robot himself, Kawhi Leonard, was, I mean, he was Kawhi, what? 28 points, 9 assists, 10 boards, shipped in 4 steals as well. A remarkably efficient 10 of 15 from the field. He played incredible. It's Kawhi Leonard. The reality is, if you had told them, hey, you held, you held Kawhi to 28 points, you'd be like, okay, but maybe not so much Marcus Morris dropping 23, Paul George with 22, Reggie Jackson with 15, and Luke Kennard, Terrence Mann combined for 24. The bench was key for the Mavs. I mentioned Mann 13, Kennard 11, or Kennard 11 for the Clippers. The Mavs, meanwhile, uh, knock, knock, where was the bench? Four points out of Dwight Powell in just five minutes of action, two from Jalen Brunson, and I know the bench did not play this that much in this game, but they were terrible. 0 of 4 from the field. Trey Burke was 0 of 3. Maxi Klebo was 0 of 2. There were six rebounds combined. Brunson did, did do a good job of getting boards. But the Mavs supporting cast, I think unquestionably, is the biggest reason why they came up short in this critical Game 7. Now, if you guys want NBA videos all off-season long, go subscribe to our Chat Sports YouTube channel. As the NBA playoffs move on, we're going to keep you guys covered there, but also this offseason because NBA free agency is the best. So go check out our, our YouTube channel. It's the Chat Sports one right there, bottom of your screen, youtube.com 
slash chat sports TV. Let's dive into some takeaways out of this series, looking ahead, if you will. Beginning with a positive one, right? Luka is the truth. He absolutely carried the Mavs in this one, all right? They absolutely did. Luka was a pivotal reason and the core reason why the Mavs were even involved in this series. Like, Luka is the reason why they were competitive, why they were involved. He deserves all the credit in the world for the effort that he put together. Great first half, of course, in, in, in Game 7. He clearly was kind of out of gas in, in the second half there. I would argue that, that Luka Doncic is one of the very best players in the NBA. I'd say probably top five. But he does need more help to be maximized. When you put up this level of production over the course of the series against the Clips, 35 points, almost 36. You average a double-double with 10 assists, almost eight boards, and you're shooting 40% from deep. You're supposed to win that series, regardless of it being Kawhi Leonard on the other side. The difference for Kawhi and the Clippers was they had Paul George and Morris and others were emerging as well. Now, it's not all perfect out of Luka. I think we would all agree. Luka has to be better from the free throw line. For a guy who shoots as well as he does, what he shot from the line is, is just not going to cut it in playoff games. But you know what? Luka's only 22, guys. I got six years on him. Like, Luka is, I think, the best young player in the NBA, if we're not counting, you know, the older guys like KD, LeBron, AD, etc. I think he's the best young one. I think the top five player. At age 22, he's probably only going to get better in the next few years. The Mavs are lucky to have him. So I want you guys right now to rank Luka among NBA players. Is he top two, top three? Is he the best? Get your votes in for me in the comments section. Now part of this next little discussion point, it's almost a two-fold one, the help, the supporting cast. The Mavs need more help. Luka cannot be asked to carry the, the team the way he was, produce the way he did, and still come up short. That's not really ideal. Now, in the postseason, there were some, I think, very tr notable, I'll, I'll say it, trends that emerged. Tim Hardaway was a bit inconsistent. He did average 17 points. One of nine from three in game seven is a problem, however. Chris Stops. We'll get back to him more in depth. But Boban's fun. He played pretty well. I get it. But you, you got to get more out of Boban. At least if he's your fourth best, you're fine. But you need more out of your other two guys there. Dorian Finney-Smith, a nice supporting piece as well. Jalen Brunson, eight was okay. I think a lot of this comes down to Kristaps Porzingis. And also someone not even on this list. That's Josh Richardson in this season for the Mavs. Remember, they gave up a bit to get him. Seth Curry played pretty well for the Sixers so far this postseason. And Jay Rich went from being a basically a starter at 30 minutes per game to getting those numbers cut in half. Everything else dropped by about half as well. This is not acceptable for a player that was supposed to be a pivotal part of your rotation and a big defensive asset for you in a game in Game 7 where you could not get a defensive stop that was supposed to be Richardson's defining trait, the reason why the Mavs got him. Instead, I mean, I think we can say it right now, even though I like the move at the time, I think the Mavs would have been better served keeping Seth Curry, at least for the three-point shooting, if Richardson isn't even going to play much in a pivotal postseason game. Just six minutes. That's far too light for a player who's supposed to be a key part of your rotation. Finally, and this is the one that we'll be focused on for much of the upcoming offseason, is Kristaps Porzingis actually a long-term piece? Now, make no mistake, the Mavs won this trade. THJ and Kristaps are better than some later-ish first-round picks and Dennis Smith Jr. But Kristaps has to actually show up. And I get that they're, they're doing some more big man looks and he's on the wing a little bit more. But overall, I don't think anyone, even Kristaps himself, if he's being honest, would say that he played well this series. He is a liability on defense, and that's fine if you're getting buckets. But Kristaps did not get buckets this postseason. In a series where the Mavs desperately needed Porzingis to play more like Porzingad, they did not get that. They got a pretty, frankly, mediocre performance out of a guy who's supposed to be putting up, frankly, double this production. 13.1 points per game. Boosted by a 16-point effort in Game 7. Just the 1.3 assists. 
5.4 boards? You're huge, Kristaps. How are you not racking up more boards than that? That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. And then you're shooting sub 30% from deep? That is a problem. And he was 0 for 5 in this one. And again, it's not every three is wide open. But when you got Luka, Luka being an awesome player, the shots are normally pretty open. This was not good enough from, from Porzingis. You're 7-3 and you're not getting boards and you're not making your open jumpers. What exactly is the point then? So we will talk more about this in future videos. But what do you guys want to do with Kristaps? Get your votes in for me. Type T for trade or type in K for keep.